we have the discussion for those that are very high risk, so that, again, those like TP53 mutated or 17P deleted patients. The data with the BDK inhibitors looks a little bit stronger than with that fixed duration venetoclaxobinutuzumab. So for those patients, I'm still trying to kind of steer them towards the BDK inhibitors, though it's not wrong to do venetoclaxobinutuzumab in those patients either. Um, and then we kind of talk about side effect profiles. So, you know, ibrutinib has much, much more robust safety and efficacy data, really. Um, but with the safety data, it, it's both good and bad. So you know what you're getting with ibrutinib, but there are more toxicities that have come out with such longer duration of follow-up. So you have atrial fibrillation, which is probably on the order of 10 to 15 percent of patients, more in the older patients. You have hypertension, um, again, probably a little bit more common in the older patients, though that's not entirely clear. You have the small risk of bleeding, and then you have some of those um, just common but annoying side effects like the arthralgias, myalgias, diarrhea, um, uh, bruising, and gastrointestinal reflux. With a calibrutinib, you have fewer side effects probably in general, definitely less atrial fibrillation, probably less hypertension, probably about the same risk of bleeding, um, less annoying side effects, but patients have to take it twice a day. Um, and then you have venetoclaxobinutizumab, so you have the fixed duration, but very much more labor intensive and time intensive in the beginning because you have the venetoclax ramp up and the obinutizumab that um, you know, both can be time consuming.